Hi Vincent, we are here in the center of Oslo on the rooftop of the new opera building in Oslo. It's a beautiful building. This used to be a giant highway, but now it's art and culture and that is such a good combination. We're talking here to Sjoerd Smit. He's the deputy ambassador of the Netherlands here in Norway. Sjoerd, if you talk about Norway, what is so genius about the secret of EV in Norway? I think Norway is really a front runner when it when it comes about the electrification of um, personal transport in particular. And I think if you look now, already 90% of all the new cars that are bought here are electrical. So it's really the world leader in terms of uh, electrification of transport. We are so je jealous of the Norwegians, you know that of course. But do you know how is Norway looking at the Netherlands and at different European countries if we talk about EV? Yeah, they admire also the Netherlands, for not so much for the percentage of electrification but that, that it's getting there, but Norway is leading there, but mainly for things of, uh, as the, um, the charging infrastructure, also the compatibility of how to pay for it, uh, the entrepreneurial spirit that is really driving these initiatives. And here they're also looking forward to, to welcome that here in their setting. Because normally you have the, the typical EV driver here that has a, has a house and they plug in from home. And uh, they don't really use the, uh, the, the charging infrastructure that, that often, but it is about to change. Talking about EV, how did, how did Norway come so far in the field of EV? How did they become the number one? Yes, Norway is very early already taking a dramatic choice of saying, will this require a, a very big nudge of the government to actually reach the um, well the zero emission transportation and therefore they they took away all the taxation that uh, typically you will find on a on a fossil fuel driven car and that led to the uh, to the situation that if you buy like a middle middle class kind of car it's actually cheaper to buy the electrical version than the benzene version. And it's uh, smart policies. It's about stimulation of um, well, it's economic incentives that are being provided by the government. Yeah, and if you look at those incentives, is the policy going to change here? Well, yes, it, it will change at some point. They, they have already, uh, the, the new government, they have announced that they, they are going to, to change it a little bit because there are um, there. Are thinking that already eh, with this high percentage um, it, it, the, it has already a lot of success this, um, the, this kind of stimulation and they would like to take it away now for the, the top segment of cars and honestly you do see a lot of top segment cars here uh, electrical Porsche the very nice uh, Tesla and this government does not really want to be perceived as stimulating or giving financial incentives to people that can uh, afford those kind of cars it is so interesting you take the ferry the electric ferry every day can you tell something about how Norway is doing and in the maritime sector and maybe even in the aviation sector can you tell something about it yeah for sure you, you know Norway is the country of fjords and, and water has always been like the natural, natural highway of transport in, um, here in, in Norway. And myself, I live on a peninsula, so I take indeed the ferry every, uh, every day. But it's electrified and they uh, already, so I think it was about five years ago that they had already changed it to, to, to a, a friendly kind of engine. But uh, two years ago, they completely refurbished it to electrical ferry and there's about uh, 80 electrical ferries already in in Norway and it's it's really picking up so it's um, it's quite interesting to see and also the larger ones going going across the fjords and then they they, they, they put charging uh, systems on on both sides and actually well even the the, the larger kind of ferries they are now uh, driven by um, electricity and they're also looking into other opportunities for the that's maritime, that's really the green shipping, where hydrogen is, uh, and maybe even ammonia, is, is more uh, rational choice than electrification. And if you talk, because you know Norway is a big country, ferries are an important part, but I heard that there's also um, aviation from the northern part of the country to, to here. What can you tell about aviation in, in, in Norway? 
Yeah, in Norway, it's still if you if you take take the the plane, it's like taking the bus. So, um, which in a way is it's nice, it's convenient, but it it, it has of course a large um, uh, ecological footprint. So also Norway then, and the the government and the, the sector itself is very cognizant of that, and they want to reduce the, their footprint, and they're stimulating electrical uh, aviation, uh, not only electrical aviation because that's only feasible for the time being have like the short the, the smaller planes and not not really the the Boeing or Airbus type uh, between the large cities but they're also looking in other ways of uh, trying to to use different type of fuels but as if aviation it's um there there's there's quite a lot of um, universities and and, and centers uh, research centers doing doing um, really cutting edge work on this and uh, there are some some test flights already in uh, in, in some areas when do you think you can take an electric flight to the northern part of Norway? When when is this sort of expected? I think technically speaking, it's probably already possible, but I think it requires too many stops in between. But uh, it, it would be a nice holiday destination, don't you think so? And talking about um, new uh, new um, developments, um, can you tell something about this new battery factory they have just opened? Can you tell something about it? Yes, I was very, uh, very positively surprised by that because there has been a lot of talk about the the green shift here, and um, uh, th that's that's nice, and it gives a good, yeah, a feel good feeling. But at the end of the day, you also want to see, okay, what kind of concrete steps are being taken on the on the ground? And Norway, uh, well, not only Norway, it's Norway the government together with uh, the Swedish government and as well as as the private sector, they have opened a battery uh, recycling plant in Frederik which is uh, actually recycling mainly batteries used in electrical vehicles and they have a recycling percentage of 85% already which is really really high and it's uh, it's a new kind of technology and it's so it's the first the first factory of this kind in Europe and um, it, it's it's a it's a deliberate investment of the Norwegian government to make sure that they are very much present in, in the entire battery value chain because they have already a lot of uh, aluminium, uh, aluminium uh, they have uh, rare earth um, minerals so that's, that's the mining part of it but also they want to make sure that they are uh, they are there in the production side of things but but this factory is not producing but it's mainly producing new uh, well recycled raw materials for other battery plants either in Sweden or in Norway and maybe also in the Netherlands in the future. Yeah, because I think it's so interesting. They're so proud of it. They is this, you think, sort of swift uh, change to uh, from you know having a lot of EVs on the road to having the whole supply chain in your own country? Is that you think the shift they want to make? Yes, for sure, because it, it's not only focusing on uh, electrification of, uh, of, of vehicles and of transport. I think if you, if you look in Oslo, where you've been walking around in Oslo, you see very few cars in the first place. It's a deliberate choice. We're here on the roof of the opera, uh, which I think 20 years ago, this used to be like a spaghetti style of, uh, of, of highway. Uh, some something that you don't really want in the midst of your city, right? So now they have the opera tunnel and they also reduced the traffic. So they're they're looking for uh, for smarter and for green solutions uh, on all scores, and this is part of it. And you could also, and that's I think also I'm, uh, looking forward to, to tomorrow, where also the Dutch companies that are showing the total solutions, right? You can uh, accommodate uh, electrical driving with your household uh, use of electricity. And I think also in Norway, they're very interested in that. Thank you so much, Short, for the wonderful insights you gave in the e electrification of Norway, in fact. And they are such a big inspiration for the rest of the world. We are going back to uh, EVS now because it's gone. It's going to start raining and it. my hair is blowing in the wind. So I think it's time to go back to the webinar.